reaction to winning the game and remaining vulnerable? Well, huge win, obviously. Um, you know, for the team goals, but also, you know, the Cal community, the players, uh, student body, everybody. I mean, I don't know that there's a better 30 minutes to an hour in the year than when you're able to win the big game and retain the axe. I mean, it's a great feeling. I want the guys to enjoy it. And, you know, for some of them, it's their first experience in the big game, and they're now understanding just how much it means to folks. So uh, it's, it's a huge win on many levels. Jim? Um, can you talk a little bit about Fernando? First three touchdown game of his career, took a big shot to the helmet, just kept coming back. He's a tough kid, man. Uh, he took a big, big shot. They did all the tests. Um, he came up. Ben Finley did a nice job going in. We finished that drive with a touchdown. Uh, Fernando jogged back up and just, yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm going back in the game. And, uh, he's a tough kid. Uh, he's going to get better and better. You know, he's still growing as a football player, but man, he is a competitor. And he's a genuine guy, and uh, he has the respect of his teammates. Sean Griselle, I mean, what, what words would best describe his performance after 136 receiving yards on this night? Oh, man, it's a big day. Uh, dare you say big game hero, he's going to be in the conversation, you know. I mean, Tron, from a year ago to right now, has made uh, as big a jump as anybody. He cares deeply about football and the team. He's a competitive guy. It, it matters to him. And it's great to see a guy like that that puts in all that work. He walked on. He was from Park City, Utah, walked on, was not highly recruited by any means, but uh, just goes to show if you commit yourself to it and you have some talent that you can uh, you know, make this football thing work. And so I'm really proud of him and uh, a bunch of other guys. But it was a big day for Trump. Justin, uh, Jaden carried the ball 36 or 37 times, yeah. a lot more than he's ever carried it before. Just talk about him being able to handle that. Well, we knew we wanted to get Jaden the ball, and you know he was ready for it. He welcomes that. Uh, so we caught 36, and he, he caught it, or excuse me, rushed it 36 times, and he caught a couple, I think. So you know he's a talented guy. We want to make sure Jaden touches the ball. So when you just look at the number of plays we ran, I mean, about half the time he's getting it. So uh, he makes a lot of things happen. And again, just went out there and competed like crazy. So really proud of him. How much does it help? Fernando to have someone like that that he can trust. Yeah, that's big. I mean, Fernando, the receivers, the O-line, who really start the whole thing. Those guys battled today, too. You know, I'm, it was a little uh, just sloppy at times for us. We, You know, first half especially, kind of were shooting ourselves in the foot, but they kept playing. They kept, you know, competing. Kind of like this year's gone. You know, it hasn't always gone our way, but the guys stayed with it. And, uh, when you have a guy like Jaden, you know, if you get him the ball enough, good things are going to happen. Would you consider this one of the defense's best games this year? They held Stanford under 300 yards and 15 points. I thought they played pretty dang well. Uh, I don't know if there was any one individual. I think Lou Hearns made some plays on the ball, which were, it was great to see, you know, competing one-on-one. -on -one. We got some pressure on him. Uh, didn't sack him maybe as much. We had a couple opportunities to sack him that got away from us. But overall, I thought that group played real well. There weren't many busts. Um, they hit the deep ball on us. Um, you know, we had it matched up. They just, you know, good fast receiver and a guy threw a good ball. Uh, but really, other than that one drive, we held them to field goal attempts, and they got an excellent elite field goal kicker. But I, I was uh, pleased with the effort of the defense, and the defensive coaches did a, did a great job getting those guys ready. Go ahead and raise your hand. We'll call upon you. We'll go to Steve Cronin next. I just want to go back a little bit to Fernando getting hurt on the sideline and he's back and that's what transpired in those whatever five to ten minutes. Well, yeah, the trainers, the trainers take him and it's totally the, uh, the trainers call at that point. Doctors, there's a, a bunch of them uh, go do all their assessments and run the tests they need to run. They're talking with the player. We don't, we're not involved in that in any way and then uh, basically when all those tests are done, the trainer will come and tell us whether the player is available or not. And so they came up and said, hey, he's up. And then immediately after that, he comes jogging over and not lobbying, but you know, making it known that he was available to play. So, yeah. you're gonna, you're gonna be in next. Go to Mia. I will forever get to say it won the final big game of the Pac-12. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, this Pac-12, you know, ending thing seems to come up each week. Um, we're gonna continue to play the big game, and uh, we're all thankful.
thankful for that. Uh, and it just feels great to come out um, victorious and keep the act. It just means means so much. I mean, just watch the reaction of the people. And I've said it for how many ever years I've been here. You know, the reaction of the, the fans and the student body and the people who have uh, you know, associated with Cal after the game. There's just nothing like that. I think with that, winning any football game is difficult, but especially a rivalry, a rivalry game like this one. Um, what was challenging about tonight, and how do you guys respond? It's always going to be a challenge in rivalry games. So it's the 126th game. And 1892 was the first one. There was a few years it wasn't played for different reasons in the early 1900s. Um, and 55 of those 126 have been decided by a or less. So nearly half. All right, so each and every time it's going to be a battle. We knew it would be. Uh, we knew they're going to fight. They got good coaches. They got good schemes and good players. So we knew that coming in. Um, and what's most important is what you do during the week. Give yourself a chance to come out and play well. And at the same time, I want them to learn about the big game and the history of it. So we talk about all this. Ben from Rivals. Thank you. Uh, just what did you guys do to defend Iam and as well as you guys did? Held him under 50 yards receiving. He's torched a lot of teams this year. You guys were able to contain this. What was the key to doing that? Uh, collective effort. Co uh, rushing, covering, playing zone, playing man, playing split safety, playing single safety. We didn't kind of line up and do one thing. Um, really proud of the entire defense and the defensive staff. Um, again, it's a tough offense. Uh, Troy Taylor's a really good offensive coach, and um, so we knew they'd have some issue plays for us, which they did. But uh, again, I kind of go back to the guys competing and winning some of those one-on-ones, pass rush, coverage. That's what it takes. And Ellick's a, a really talented player, so I'm proud of our guys for stepping up in the challenge. Kato Ulave is coming off Pac-12 player, <clears throat> defensive player of the week. Do you have much sense of if he might be able to be back and available next week? I don't know yet. Don't know yet. We're hope, hopeful he'll be back as soon as possible. Kato's a good football player. He gets his, he's around the ball a lot. He tackles, he tips the ball, um, and he almost had an interception today. So we'll hopefully get Kate back as soon as possible. I thought that probably the, the key play of the game was that early in the fourth quarter, we had fourth and seven. You're, I'm sure you're weighing the field goal versus going for it. Hopefully for your mind, what was the decision? How was the decision made to, to go for it and then make the back for Brazil? Yeah, big play. We were kind of at a uh, one of those spots on the field where it's you're in, in between, you know, uh, whether you're going to kick a field goal, a long field goal, whether you want to go for it, you know, punting at that point, you know, it's probably not worth the yardage. Um, and so, great job on the offense, hanging in there, great protection, Tron getting open. That was a huge play in the game. I think you're right. That's going to be one of the probably three or four that you circle. Um, but I think we were really in that gray area of. of and I kind of have a, had a yard line in my mind of where we would kick a field goal, uh, and if we weren't, we were going to go for it. And we actually ended up going backwards, I think, on the from the play before, and then we ended up going for it and getting it. So great job by the O line and QB and Tron and making that play. Anybody, anybody else have a final question? Yeah, Justin, can you just talk about next week for bowl eligibility? You go to UCLA and they went big today against their rival. What will that be like, and how will your team respond? Well, we got to carry this momentum. And I uh, you know the energy is going to be great on Monday. Uh, and we know uh, we know what to say, and we know UCLA is going to be a really good team. They got we've seen them on tape enough. Uh, Chip Kelly's a hell of a coach, so we know it's going to be a, a challenge down there. So we got to have a great week of practice and try and get as many guys uh, healthy as we possibly can and, and go down there and, and play our best football. We'll need our best football to win. How excited are you to be in this position? Yeah, I mean, I think it speaks to the character of the guys on the team. You know, there's that was a tough stretch. Um, there were some games that didn't go the way that we probably obviously wanted them to go or felt like they could have gone if we'd done a few things a little bit better. Uh, but the guys, we kept coaching them. We've got to talk about that all along. We're not going to feel sorry for ourselves. We're going to continue to hold you to high standards. And they did the same of themselves. And it was no division, offense, defense, special teams, or this position, that position. Those guys play together, they compete, they practice, they come to meetings, there's nobody showing up late. So I really appreciate them. And they're the reason. You know, because I mean, every coach would probably tell you the same thing about what you got to do in order to finish strong, but they've been the ones that have done it. And uh, I'm really proud of them for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey! All right, Jay, <laughs> Curtis, go for it. How, how big a deal would it be? 
big deal. It's a real big deal. It's one of our goals, is winning a bowl game. Uh, it also, I mean, there's just, there's a number of reasons. So we're, we are uh, well aware of what's at stake, and uh, I know there's going to be great energy, and we got, like I said before, we got to go out and play our best football. Jake, I'm happy to offer you a follow-up if you want. <laughs> No, I'm good. <laughs> 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 <laughs>